real pleasure to be here. In the year 2004, Zena Brisky and Ross Kaufman made the documentary Born into Brothels. It's a beautiful portrait of young children living in the red light district in Calcutta. Obviously growing up in the most difficult of circumstances, Zena Brisky gave each one of them a camera, film camera, and taught them photography. Very soon these kids began to view their world through a fresh pair of eyes. Some of them even managed to break from their very difficult circumstances and go on to have successful careers. Born into Brothels for me reaffirms what we all know about the camera. It really is a unique piece of technology. It allows us to express ourselves. It allows us to communicate with each other. Using it is an emotional experience. So a few years ago, I started thinking about how one could leverage the enormous appeal of cameras to address a social issue, namely education. So if you design a camera for education, what should it look like? Here is my first sketch. You can see it's an informal sketch. I felt that the camera should have features that are not commonly found in other cameras. On one hand, they should inspire creativity. On another hand, they should expose the user to all the underlying science and engineering concepts. So let me give you a few examples of these features. Here you see that the camera has a rechargeable battery, but it also comes with a power generator. So let's say you happen to be out on a shoot and you run out of charge. The idea is that you should be able to crank up this power generator and generate enough power to continue to take photographs. And the first question to raise is, is this an, a necessary feature in a camera? And, and clearly not. But what it allows us to do is to describe to the user the mechanics of a gearbox, electromagnetic induction, which is the basis of a dynamo or a motor, and of course, battery technology as well. And here is the optics of the camera, or the lens of the camera. It's not really a single lens, but rather a lens wheel with three different modules on it, very much akin to a Swiss Army knife. You can switch between the three modes to capture a regular picture, which would be something like what you would get from your mobile phone, a, a panoramic or a wide-angle shot. And then finally, this is something that kids find very exciting, 3D. That is, you're able to capture an anaglyph and then wear red-green glasses and see what you've shot in 3D. And last but not the least, I felt strongly that the camera should come as a kit. You all know that we live in an age where software rules. And coming from a computer science department, I think that's a good thing. However, I do believe that the next generation should also be comfortable with the stuff that software sits on top of. And designing the camera as a kit, especially a digital camera, is a really challenging and interesting aspect of the, the project itself. It forces one to think about design as a concept in both space and time. So with these early ideas, uh, quite a bit of hard work and the passage of time, we ended up with the Big Shot camera kit. Big Shot, by the way, is a play on words, which you may have realized. It's the idea of exposing young ones to these concepts and turning them into Big Shots. Now you can see here that the kit doesn't require you to assemble each and every electronic component of the camera. That would simply be unreasonable because we live in an age where some of these concepts, some of these devices and mechanisms are very precise, for example, the optics. But what it does allow you to do is to touch and feel the underlying components. And in doing so, you can draw the user to the underlying concepts, the science and engineering concepts. So we have online instructions on how these, the camera comes together, but I'm going to show you a very short video clip, which is a summary. So once you've put it together, you get this. If you look at the camera from the front, you see that it has this funky looking wheel, that's the lens wheel, and the hand crank. And so it's meant to pique curiosity. But if you turn it around, it's completely bare. 
It's meant to provoke conversation. You see here there's a rechargeable battery that's a lithium polymer battery. But like I said before, if you happen to be out on a shoot and you run out of charge, you can simply crank up the camera a few times and take a few pictures. And in the back here, you see that there's an LCD viewfinder, like most cameras. That allows you to talk about polarization and liquid crystals and all that good stuff. In the front, you have one watt LED for a flash, which then, again, exposes the user to PN junctions, semiconductors, and how they generate light. And like I said before, there is this lens wheel where in the first setting you have your regular shot, just like a regular mobile phone camera. In the second setting you have a panoramic shot with about 80 degree field of view. And finally your 3D anaglyph that you can shoot using a prism. So now I'd like to share with you on a personal note the true inspiration for the camera. And that really was my father. My father was what I would call an engineer's engineer. He had this uncanny understanding of all things inanimate. He could look at something and know exactly how much force it could take before it broke. And when I was a kid, and these are my kids working with my father, but when I, when I was a kid, I would spend hours with him. I was really a sidekick. I would hand him the tools, and I would point the flashlight in the right places. And um, we spent a lot of time together doing this kind of stuff. And I don't remember ever giving things that were broken at home to a mechanic or a repair shop. Everything got uh, fixed at home. And it wasn't always easy. I remember times when we would both be under an old Indian car trying to fix it. And through the gap between the car and the ground, I could see my friends playing cricket. And the sun would be fading. And with it, my, my chances of playing with them would be quickly going. But yet, I have to say that looking back, those hours that I spent with my father, I believe had a greater influence on my thinking than any formal course that I've taken in my life. It's what I would call an unmeasurable experience. No grades, no scores, but potentially with immeasurable impact. Big Shot is really meant to be one such experience. Now, we can all agree that making is wonderful. My colleague Mitch Resnick at uh, MIT talks about how making not only fosters creativity and learning, but also makes kids happy. And I would say the same arguments apply to grown-ups as well. But there is a question worth asking, is making enough? You see, some of the concepts that we're talking about here are based on fundamental laws of nature. We'll just call them fundamentals. They can't all be absorbed in all their full glory by simply building and making. And that's where I think Big Shot tries to go the extra mile. We have with the camera an accompanying website, which has an enormous amount of educational material to go with it. And my students, Guru Krishna and Brian Smith, were major contributors to this website. So you see here, there is a section called Learn on the top right here. And this really is a textbook. And this textbook has nine different chapters. And you can see from the titles here, like image processing, some of these are concepts that we actually teach at a college level. But we are trying to make them accessible to a younger audience. And in each chapter, we have interactive demonstrations that help you visualize the underlying concepts. Let me just share with you some of these visualizations. So here you see the concept of gears, gear ratios, and gear boxes. How do you construct them? Electromagnetic induction, which of course is the basis of a motor or a dynamo. And how these two different concepts can be brought together to create a power generator where you can manually hand crank and generate enough power to store in a battery. Image formation using a lens. And the highly non-intuitive concept of depth of field. We talk about what really is an image sensor. What are pixels? We talk about them all the time. How does an LED work, and how does it actually generate light? And we even try to describe all the steps that go from the minute that you hit the shoot button to the capture of the photograph, its storage and memory, all the way to its display on the LCD screen. This is the firmware that sits on the hardware. So one of the things that I find really interesting about using a camera as an educational technology 
is that because of its inherent nature, it allows you to juxtapose the sciences and the arts within a single learning experience. So here you see some of the concepts that we've described on the website. Some are descriptions and some are home projects and so on and so forth, but the science concepts are colored orange and we use blue for the arts. And as a teacher who wants to create an after-school program or an in-class curriculum, you can imagine interweaving these different modules to create a really rich and interesting program, educational program. Now, Big Shot just came to market a couple of months back. It was brought to market by a company called EduScience. But way before that, when it was a project in my lab, we've built about a dozen or so prototypes in different colors. And these are the colors of M&Ms, by the way. Always works. And we took these prototypes and did field tests with a few hundred kids and their teachers in four cities. New York, of course, Bangalore, Vung Tau in Vietnam, and Tokyo in Japan. And these were kids between the ages of, say, 7 and, and 15, boys and girls from very different cultures and socioeconomic backgrounds. And across the board, I have to say that the response was extremely positive, and that was really the tipping point for us. I just want to share with you some of the comments from the kids. Like other cameras just cover up everything to make it look pretty nice, but this looks pretty fun. How has it been to put the camera together? It's fun. What is it about it that's fun? Uh, if, um, I feel like, I'm not sure. It's just fun. <laughs> At the end of the day, Big Shot is, I believe, a very humble, low-tech piece of technology, but with a fairly ambitious goal. I don't see it as just a kit. I don't see it as just a digital camera. I actually see it as an experience. And this experience starts off by building and learning the underlying science and engineering concepts. That's the STEM component of the experience. Once you're done, you have a fully functioning camera with which you can walk into the world of photography, documentation, and storytelling. Let's just call that the arts. One kid may be drawn to the sciences. Another one may take to photography. As far as I'm concerned, they're both equally good outcomes. And then there's a third piece that happens naturally, which is to express by sharing. It's really remarkable how quickly these kids are able to identify a piece of the world that's interesting to them, frame it, and shoot it. And I really feel that kids, or grown-ups for that matter, from different cultures and socioeconomic backgrounds, sharing pictures really takes a small step towards broadening their perspective on the world. So talking about pictures, I'd like to share some of the pictures taken by big shots around the world, and I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Thank you all very much.